Greetings everyone, I am Dr. Monica, working as associate professor in NIET Pharmacy Institute, which has been affiliated to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University. In this session, uh, I am taking the subject that is industrial pharmacy 1 BP 502T. So, in this mainly I am taking up this unit number 5. In unit number 5, as I have told, I have divided into 3 modules. First, in, mo in first module, I am covering up the cosmetics part. In the second module, I will cover up the aerosols part and in the third module, I will try to focus on the packaging parts. So, in my few of the last sessions, the 3 sessions which I have already taken on unit number 5, in the first session, I mainly focused, I, uh, my first session was based on the cold creams and vanishing cream. In the second session, I have covered up the shampoos and hair dyes and in the third session, I mainly focus on the lipstick part that how we can prepare, how can we can formulate, how we can evaluate lipsticks. So, in this session, what I am going to cover up is the last part of our module 1 cosmetics that is how we can formulate and prepare toothpaste how, and also along with that I would like to give an overview on the sunscreen agents which are being incorporated into our various skincare formulations. So, that thing I would like to focus on uh, give an overview of, upon that that is sunscreen agents. So, for in the, the content which I cover uh, which I am going to cover first is formulation and preparation of toothpaste and second one is I will give an overview on the sunscreen agents. So, if we talk about the toothpaste as I have told whenever we are discussing whenever, whenever we are studying about the formulations. So, first thing we need to note is the toothpaste part we need to know the de definition of toothpaste how we can define toothpaste. After that, we will cover up the formulation part and after uh, formulating, we will cover up the manufacturing part and after manufacturing part, we will try to focus on the evaluation that how we can evaluate this preparation. So, first if the definition part, how we can define toothpaste, a toothpaste or is also known as dentifrice, a substance, a product which is being uh, that is applied to the teeth. A toothpaste or dentifrice is a substance used with the toothbrush for the purpose of cleaning the accessible surfaces of the teeth. So, these are the agents, these are the preparation which are being applied to the toothbrush and when once applied they are being used to remove the debris or remove clean over teeth, uh, the surface of the teeth which are accessible to us. So, what is the purpose of toothpaste is it they clean the tooth, teeth, tooth and they polish them, they remove the stains, they reduce the that is uh, incidence of tooth decay and reduction of oral bad odors, whatever bad odors are found in the mouth that are also being controlled by the use of toothpaste on daily basis. So, toothpaste are actually the dentifrices which are being used to clean, polish, remove stains and reduce the tooth decay along with that they also uh, control the bad odor of the mouth. So, in that way we can define our toothpaste. So, after that once you have done know, you know how to define toothpaste, next part which you need to note it down is your formulation that how we can formulate toothpaste, what are the ingredients we can add to our toothpaste for, so that we are may, must be able to make prepare toothpaste in the lab. So, what are the main agents we need to add into our toothpaste is the most common agent which we need to add is your abrasives. Abrasives are the agents which are being incorporated 20 to 40 percent of our toothpaste contains abrasive agents that are mainly solid insoluble partic particles causing abrasion, remove debris and reduce the stain from the teeth. These are the abrasive agents which mainly reduce the are stains and remove the debris from the teeth, remove the stains from the teeth. So, these are must to add in our formulation in concentration 20 to 40 percent. Along with abrasive agents, we need to incorporate, we need to add that is binders. Binding agents are also being incorporated and along with that we need to add the hemoctans. Now, uh, examples of abrasive agents which we need to add is that is aluminum oxide. Along with that we can also use calcium pyrophosphates, we can use carbonates like sodium bicarbonate, calcium carbonate and silica. These are the main agents which we generally add into our formula, formula formulation. 
So along with that, as we have, we need to add binders. So binding agents are added in concentration, two percent, two percent, and they actually provide the consistency and shape to the pastes. Paste formulation uh, consistency of the paste is maintained using the binding agents, which is being added in two percent concentrations. And the polymers which we need to add, examples of the binding agents, a polymers we add is CMC, that is carboxy methyl. cellulose alginates and gums these are the agents which we incorporate into our truth formulations along with that we need to add hemactins hemactins i told you in my previous sessions also that hemactins are the agents which actually absorb moisture from air so these are the agent these are must these are also needed to be added into our truth formulation also and generally they are added in 20 to 40 percentage so used in toothpaste prevent the loss of water and subsequent hardening of our product as we see that our toothpaste are exposed on daily basis to the environment so when they are exposed to the environment they must not get hardened so that's why hardening to prevent the hardening part that our paste must not get hardened we need to add hemactins so that hemactins must be able to absorb moisture from the air and it they will keep our paste soft our soft paste must remain the remain soft and examples of hemactins which we generally use is glycerin sorbitol polyethylene glycose mannitol and propylene glycose so these are the main ingredients which we can incorporate in add into our toothpaste formulation first one is abrasives second is binders and third one is hemactins after that you must also know the concentration part how in how much concentration they must be used along with that you need to incorporate you need to add sweetening agents into our toothpaste formulation sweetening agents are must wait and surfactants we have discussed surfactants in detail in our shampoo formulations the session 2 which we i have took on unit number 5 in that i have explained the role of surfactants i have explained the that is what what mechanisms they follow and how they work surfactants are the agents which are surface active agents and they act also act as detergent so they also have a detergency effect in the formulation so to produce the forming they also act as a forming agent surfactants based on the hlb value of that surfactant particular surfactant they can act as wetting agents they can act as emulsifying agents they can act as uh, solubilizing agents along with that they can also act as detergents and forming agents so what is the role of uh, surfactants in toothpaste is they act as forming agents along with that they also act as detergents in our uh, that is toothpaste formulation so examples of that is uh, agents which we used uh, that is uh, sodium lauryl sulfate sodium n lauryl and polyethylene glycose so these are the main agents which we generally add as surfactants into our tooth formulation and some of the tooth formulations are also medicated one medicated what we understand by the medicated part that is they can act as antibacterial they can act as antifungal so those kind of agents also sometimes we need to incorporate in to uh, con- to cure the gums and to control the antimicrobial impact of our uh, and microbes on the teeth so we need to add some of the medicated ingredients and those mainly generally ingredient which we add is the fluoride actives fluoride is the main agent which we generally add into our medicated tooth formulations so examples of agents which we add into as a fluoride are sodium fluoride sodium monofluorophosphate and stannous fluorides these are the main agents which are being incorporated into medicated toothpaste generally we don't add into the normal toothpaste but if we require the medicated toothpaste in that case we need to add fluorides into that after that last the agents which you can add is the coloring agent and preservative are must to add in all the formulations to give a good color to the formulation along with that preservatives are the agents which stabilize our product which provide the stability as well as they enhance the <coughs> shelf life of our product to enhance the shelf life preservative are generally added in a concentration less than 1% so examples are alcohols and sodium benzoate are being added to our toothpaste formulations so these are the main formulation ingredients which we need to add you can note down the uh, that is one formula which is being used which we can use to formulate toothpaste in the labs that is the formula which contains calcium carbonate sodium lauryl sulfate glycerin 
gum tragacanth, water, saccharin, flavor and preservatives. So now in this case you can see that calcium carbonate is the abrasive agent. As I have told you need to add abrasive agent to the toothpaste. So abrasive agent in this formula is your calcium carbonate. Sodium lauryl sulfate is a surfactant, glycerin is a humectant which we need to add into our toothpaste formulation. Gum tragacanth will act as a thickening agent, we need to add saccharin, saccharin is your that is a sweetening agent we can say, flavoring agent we can add, along with that we can also add any of the preservative into our toothpaste formulation. So, this is just one of the formula which you can use to formulate your toothpaste formulation in the lab. <coughs> Now, the point comes that how we can prepare the pre prepare this formulation, how we can prepare toothpaste in the lab. So, uh, that is uh, toothpaste can be prepared on the lab scale, they can be prepared on the large scale, industrial scale. So, depending upon the area in which we want to prepare toothpaste is we need to know what kind of um, preparation method we can use, but it depends upon the level that is whether we are going to prepare in the lab or whether we are going to prepare on in the industries, whether we are going, going to prepare in the uh, lar on large scale or on the small scale. So, the preparations are prefer pre preferably made in stainless steel mixtures are being used as container for large scale. La in the large scale you must have if you visit any, uh, any of the industry then you will see that they mainly use the that is stainless steel mixtures where we will be there. What we will do? We will weigh all the ingredients, whatever ingredients you need to incorporate or need to add into the tooth formulations and after that you will put all the weighed ingredients into the stainless steel mixtures uh, and uh, once you have added into the mixture, uh, you after that uh, that is slowly rotating blades are being attached to the that is stainless steel mixture container and once they will rotate they will mix all the ingredients whatever ingredients you have added to the formulation these ingredients will get mixed. First is point is weighing you have to weigh all the ingredients properly after weighing you have to put them into the stainless steel mixtures and once you have put into the stainless steel mixtures rotating blades will move and they will mix all the ingredients whatever ingredients you have added and it can also be done with the rotating mi mi um, blades as well as planetary mixtures can also be used which will also make a semi solid preparation. Semi solid as you know so paste or ointments or toothpaste are actually the semi solid preparations they are they can they are uh, in between solid and liquid semi solid kind of a textures toothpaste generally have. So, that is why we require a mixing equipment uh, which must be a proper which have optimum speed to mix the semi solid preparations. So, planetary mixtures are also one of the mixtures which can be used for preparing such kind of semi solid preparations, but on small scale how we can prepare batch uh, of toothpaste can be made using a glass container or we can use the motor and pestle in the lab. Using motor and pestle also we can prepare our toothpaste pre formulation. The gum is mixed suitably in suitable quantity with the hemoctanes without any water proper dispersion must be made. After that you need to add chloroform and uh, other ingredients with alcohol into the preparation and can be dispersed using a binding agents. So, those all agents which we need to add into our formulation toothpaste formulation first collect those ingredients after collecting weigh those ingredients in whatever quantity we need to add those agents and after that you need to put them into the motor and pestles or into the glass containers and after that using a proper mixing equipment like pestle you have to mix the those ingredients properly and methyl cellulose should be mixed uh, with cold temperature and before adding methyl cellulose as it is acting as a that is gelling agent or it can act as a that is what we call as rheology modifier prop, uh, agent is there methyl cellulose is a gelling agent and methyl uh, rheology modifier. So, it must be uh, added at the end of the uh, that is uh, uh, studies uh, preparation, but ethyl cellulose should be dis uh, dispersed in warm water other powder ingredients must be shifted together and gradually mucilaginous mixtures will continue uh, to add and gentle stir with gentle stirring. Mucilage you have to make at the one end, in the second end you will weigh the ingredients, put them into the motor and pestle, after that you will slowly and slowly add the mucilaginous or gelling agent solution into the 
paste formulation into the powder formulation of toothpaste and mix it properly so that it will get converted with gentle stirring it will get converted to the toothpaste formulation. So, on the small, small scale this, this way you can prepare your toothpaste. So, in this case we have discussed first we discussed about the definition part. Second thing what we discussed is your that is how we can formulate what are the main ingredients which we need to add to the toothpaste and third thing we have covered up that is how we can prepare our toothpaste on the small scale as well as on the large scale level what equipments we can use to prepare our toothpaste formulations. Now, the last part of toothpaste is that how we can evaluate. Evaluation is also need to be done once you have prepared the toothpaste that must be evaluated. What parameters we need to take care of, what parameters we need to uh, check to, do the, to provide a quality. So, quality check is needed at the end. How we can check the quality? These are the parameters you need to control. One composition must be uniform homogeneity must be there, the tube inertness must be there, you must determine the sharp and edge uh, ab abrasive particles, abrasiveness of a particle which we have added as abrasive agent, abrasiveness need to be determined using various tools along with that you need to uh, determine the stability, uh, spreadability of, of, of your toothpaste formulation, you need to find the fineness whatever ingredients we have added that must have uniform size particle size ingredients whatever ingredients we are adding powders we are adding they must have must be fine along with that they must have proper particle size also must be there you need to determine that pH of your formulation that pH of the formulation must be controlled you have to determine the lead content there should be no lead content within your toothpaste formulation you need to determine that the lead content you need to determine the arsenic content in the formulation how much form it generates that also need to be determined determined at the end uh, once you have prepared the formulation so forming power of our of your uh, formulation must be noted down after that fluoride ions if you have added you are using preparing any uh, that is medicated toothpaste then you need to determine the fluoride content into your formulation and at the end also you need to do the studies known as stability studies on your formulation. Stability studies are also need to be done to check the shelf life of the product that must remain uh, stable for longer duration. So, stability tests also need to be performed using ICH guidelines. ICH guidelines you must have studied in physical pharmaceutics. So, ICH guidelines must be followed to study the stability of the formulation. You can also determine the moisture and uh, content and volatile matter within your formulation. So, these are the few formulation evaluation parameters you will need to take care to give a quality product, quality toothpaste. So, these things, uh, this is uh, about the, this was about the toothpaste part. So, in toothpaste we have, uh, I have told you about the, that how you can define what are the formulation ingredients we have incorporated third thing we have covered up that is your, how you can prepare toothpaste on large scale and as well as on small scale and in the, in the last we I have told you about the quality checks and evaluation parameters which you need to perform on the toothpaste formulation. Now next thing which we need to cover up we will cover up in this session onwards that is your sunscreen agents. Now, you must be knowing what we mean by sunscreen agents. Sunscreen agents are the agents which protect us from the ultraviolet rays which are we, we come across on day to day basis when we go to the sun we are impacted by the UV rays. So, to protect us from the UV rays we always apply sunscreen formulations almost most of the skin care products, skin care products, skin care creams, lo skin care lotions, skin care uh, that is uh, other formulations, whatever formulations we prepare for the skin generally contain sunscreen agents. Now, we need to understand what actually the sunscreen agents are, what how we can evaluate sunscreen agents, what are the regulatory bodies who are working about, um, in the field of sunscreen agents. So, that thing we need to note it down. First of all, you need to note down the uh, definition part that sunscreens are also known as sun block. Uh, these are also known as sun block means they will block the rays. Whatever rays are reaching to the skin, they are the agents which will block those rays 
example or sustain lotion is a lotion spray it, they can be found in the form of lotions they can be found in the form of gels they can be found in the form of creams uh, or sprays uh, aerosol form may be av available hai. so these are the agents which are incorporated into various kinds of skin formulation maybe creams lotions or gels so now first you need to understand about the spf factor within the sunscreen products SPF fact factor is your sun protecting factor. Now, sun protecting factor is as you must be knowing that we have this is the sun. So, uh, sun generates various kinds of UV rays. Just that UV rays we can divide into various categories that is UVC, UVB, and UVA. UVC, UVB, UVA. These are ultraviolet rays which are which we see from the sun coming from the sun. Second is the visible rays and third one is the infrared rays. So these are the rays generally comes from the sun. So what we need to block is as, as what sunscreen agents do, do is sunscreen agents generally block the ultraviolet rays because ultraviolet rays the ray are the rays which are most harmful to our skin. So that's why sunlight, whatever sunlight reaches. Uh, from surface of the uh, to the surface of the earth it contains visible rays it will contain ultraviolet rays it will contain visible rays ultraviolet rays infrared rays and uv rays uv rays are further being divided into three categories that is uvc uvb and uv uh, that is uva so three categories we all generally observe for the ultraviolet rays uh, <coughs> now what Actually, UVC rays are these are very high energy radiations. UVC rays are very high energy radiations, but these very high energy radiations are generally blocked by the ozone layer, which is present or which is covering our atmosphere or which is covering our earth atmosphere. So that's why ozone layer generally entrap these UVC rays, which are very highly energetic and highly have uh, having are having high energy radiations are there but they are generally blocked by the ozone layer they will not impact our skin they will not be able to reach our skin because they are being blocked by the atmosphere uh, having an ozone layer second rays are the high energy uvb rays first is very high energy and second one is high energy uvb rays and these uh, these are the rays which can impact immediately as we can see in this diagram uh, you can see that uh, this is UVC this is UVB and this is UVA UVC are generally blocked by the that is ozone layer whereas UVB rays are the rays which reaches the that is deeper into the uh, which reaches the uh, that is uppermost layer of the skin and UVA rays are, uh, are the rays which are re reaching that is deeper into the skin. So, high energy radiations uh, that is UVB rays does the immediate damage and, uh, and, that, and UVA rays having lower energy radiations can penetrate deeper into the skin as I have told they are having 400 nanometer uh, of uh, that is energy. So, they these can reach the deep, deeper skin. So, UVA rays are the rays which are impacting the deeper skin and UVB rays are the rays which impact the surface of the skin. They just reach to the surface of the skin and they will cause the immediate uh, that is uh, uh, impact on the skin. After that, we need to know about the categories. UVC rays will not be able to reach to the skin. UVB rays will reach to the surface of the skin, whereas UVA rays will reach to the deeper into the skin. So, we need a sunscreen agent which can control UVB rays as well as which can control UV rays. So, how we can determine the SPF factor of any of our sunscreen agent? SPF factor as I have told that is sun protecting factor. So, uh, how we can determine the sun protecting factor? This is the formula which we can use that is med PS and med US. Now, what we understand by this term med PS? Med PS is the minimum arrhythmal dose for protected skin. If we have protected our skin with using the that is as, uh, sunscreen agent, if we have applied the sunscreen agent and then we are determining the minimum arrhythmal dose of uh, that is uh, UVA rays required to impact the skin, 
then this is known as med ps and what is med S us that is minimum arrhythmal dose of what that is uv arrays uh, dose for unprotected skin we will take a skin we will apply uh, one skin we will take on which we have not applied any of the sunscreen agent and one skin we will take in on which we have applied the sunscreen agents so once you have seen there when there is no sunscreen agent the uh, the photons of uv arrays reaching is 100 photons are reaching if we have not applied or any of the sunscreen agent to our skin but if we apply sun spf 15 sunscreen agent it will provide 93 percent protection means it will just allow seven photons of uv arrays to reach the skin whereas if we can see if we have applied spf 30 sunscreen agent so then we, we can see that 97 percent protection will be given as the spf factor increases our impact of our sunscreen agent also increases and as we can see if we use spf 15 sunscreen agent it will just uh, it will protect 93 percent and if we are using spf uh, 30 then it is pro giving a protection of 95 percent to our skin only three photons will enter if we have not applied 100 photons if we have applied spf 15 just seven photons of uv rays enters and if we have applied spf 30 sunscreen agent then three photons will reach so as we can see as the spf factor increases over that is uh, impact of uh, that is rays also reduces Re uh, impact will uh, will be less as compared to the uh, unprotected skin also we can calculate the spf factor using this formula that is uh, spf factor is equal to uva dose that induce persistent pigment darkening 2 to 24 hours after exposure to sunscreen protected agents when we will apply uva rays we will like to we will put on uva or a rays on the skin which has been protected with the sunscreen agent for 2 to 4 hours uh, that is uva dose that induce persistent pigment darkening darkening that is 2 to 4 hours after exposure to sunscreen protected skin uh, divided by uva dose that induces persistent pigment darkening 2 to 4 24 hours after exposure in unprotected skin your skin is unprotected if, if then we are putting on uv rays that will uh, what impact they are going to cause what darkening what kind of how much darkening they will cause that we need to do, note it down the ratio of the both will gives us the spf factor <coughs> so now based on the spf factors we can categorize our that is skins that is uh, the uh, having spf factor more than eight that the skin will always burn and never tains the sensitive that that skin is known as your sensitive skin sensitive skin is a skin which is having the spf factor more than 8 and all this skin will always burns skin depending upon the uh, the skin to skin uh, person to person the correct uh, that is that may vary if the skin is sensitive and we are using spf factor 6 to 7 it will always burns and tains minimally similarly normal if we have normal skin in normal skin burns moderate, moderately and tains gradually the moderate skin hoti hai, they generally burns or burn hoti hai, but tain gradually karti hai. and similarly if we have insensitive or uh, skin then barely burns tains profusely and we have none if we have not applied any of the spf factor and we have insensitive skin then it will never burns and becomes deeply pigmented so in that way we can categorize our skin characteristics sensitive normal and insensitive skin uh, sensitive skin which uh, which burns easily as well as stains easily normal skin which generally burns minimally and always stains well insensitive stains are the skin which never burns and becomes uh, that is deeply pigmented so various sunscreen agents depending upon their effectiveness which we can use is that the agents which protect which gives a protective layer of the skin and they will absorb the rays or reflecting rays which will come from the sun like zinc oxide and titanium oxide similarly to incorporate substances which filter out the sun rays we can that they can act as uh, filtering out the sun rays by absorbing minimum medium range uh, similarly we have uv filters too which can filter out examples are oxybenzone compound compounds that absorb uv lights inorganic particulates and organic particulates the tinosorb is one of the examples which we can use as uv filters in our uh, creams 
Similarly, we have biologically effective substances which will prevent the symptoms of inflammation. Actually, they will be recommended to absorb the UV rays, they will act as a filter to our uh, rays. Uh, that is, they will not allow the rays to reach our skin. Physical, chemical, physical agents which are being used as sunscreen agents are titanium oxide, talc, zinc oxide and red petrolactam. They generally scatter or reflect the UV rays. Chemical agents, PABA, benzophenol, cinnamonates, they absorb the UV radiation. So, in that way we can use uh, sunscreen agents into our formulation and even we can evaluate sunscreen agents using spectrophotometers. We can note down the arrhythmial damage to our products and we can note down the sunscreen index and in vivo skin testing can be done to evaluate our sunscreen agents in the lab. We can evaluate those sunscreen agents. So, this is the reference which you can follow follow for this sunscreen agents and toothpaste. Thank you so much.